Let's talk about how you solve absolute value equations. There's just a couple of steps and then we'll look at some examples. The first step is to get the absolute value symbol by itself. So if you've got things around it, you want to move those away from the absolute value symbol to get it on one side of the equal sign all by itself. And then you want to set up two equations. When we look at our examples, I'll point out what I mean when I say set up one positive equation and one negative equation. But as you're solving to get the absolute value symbol by itself, Keep in mind that absolute value should always be equal to a positive number. So if you end up with absolute value of something equal to a negative, before you start setting up those equations, you already know that's not possible. And you could go ahead and conclude that there will be no solution for that problem. So before you do all that work, keep that valuable little tip in mind and you would save yourself a lot of effort. And then the last thing you want to do with these is check your solution. Because if you forget this part, you're going to end up with some solutions that look correct, but actually don't make sense with the original equation. So to check your solutions, you plug the values for the variables that you've solved for into the original absolute value equation and see if it makes a true statement. By a true statement, I mean 3 equals 3, the absolute value of negative 4 equals 4, because that's true, and you're just checking to make sure it makes sense. And it's always good to check your solution anyway. So let's look at some examples. For our first example, we have one that's nice and simple and straightforward. The absolute value of n minus 4 equals 13. So I don't need to do any extra work to get the absolute value by itself. That's what we want, is to have it by itself on one side with nothing around it. So we set up two equations. One is positive, so it's going to look just like this without the absolute value symbols. So we put n minus 4 equals 13. And by negative equation, I mean make one side of your equation negative. So I could say n minus 4 equals negative 13. Now we're allowed to make either side negative. I chose to make 13 negative because it's easier than making n minus 4 into negative n plus 4. But you can if that's what you prefer. So then we're going to solve. So we add 4 to both sides. <clears throat> so I get n equals 17 for one value. Add 4 again, and n would equal negative 9 for my other value. Then we want to check our solution just to make sure that that makes good sense. So we're going to plug 17 back into our original absolute value equation. So I'm going to say 17 minus 4 does the absolute value of that equal 13. <clears throat> so the absolute value of 13, because 17 minus 4 gives me 13, does equal 13. So I could circle that solution. That one is good. It's checked out. Now let's check negative 9. So does negative 9 minus 4, if we take the absolute value of it, equal 13? Negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13. So is the absolute value of negative 13 equal to 13? And yes, that's also true. So we have two solutions. M would equal 17 and negative 9. So let's look at example 2. Example 2 has a little bit more to it, but still nothing too big. We just have a 7 out front of our absolute value symbol. So we want to divide by 7 first. So we'll get the absolute value by itself. So we bring down, once we divide by 7, bring down the absolute value of 5x minus 4 equals negative 6. So then we're going to set up our two equations. So 5x minus 4 equals negative 6 and 5x minus 4 and change your sign for this one so it would equal positive 6. So now we can solve for x. So let me add 4 to both sides. Bring down 5x equals negative 2 Divide both sides by 5, so x will equal negative 2 fifths. And over here we can do the same steps. Let's add 4, bring down 5x equals 10. Divide by 5, so x would equal 2. It's real easy to just circle those and move on with your other problems on your paper or your test, but you do want to check your solutions and make sure they make good sense. So let's plug it into the original equation. So we want the one with the 7 in the front. 5, we're going to plug in negative 2 fifths for x. Minus 4, 
equals negative 42. So that valuable check is very important. So let's see, the 5 and the 5 with the denominator here will cancel out. So we have 7 times the absolute value of negative 2 minus 4 equals negative 42. So 7 times the absolute value of negative 6 equals negative 42. Well, the absolute value of negative 6 is actually positive 6. So is 7 times 6 equal to negative 42? And the answer would be no. So that's why we want to check our solution. So that one is not a solution. So let's check the other one and see if it makes good sense. So we're going to plug in x equals 2. Again, back in our original equation. So we have 7, the absolute value of 5 times 2 for x, minus 4 equals negative 42. So the absolute value, I mean 7, bring that down first. The absolute value of 5 times 2, which is 10, minus 4 would be 6 equals negative 42. So 7 times the absolute value of 6 is going to be positive 42. So again, positive 42 does not equal negative 42. So both of these don't work. But if you notice, they really didn't work from the very beginning. Because when we first divided by 7, and we got the absolute value symbol by itself, if you notice right there, it's equal to a negative number. So that is already not possible. So we actually could have saved ourselves all of this work and just stopped right there and said that is no solution. Or we could write it as a zero with a slash through it. But what happens is students get so used to the steps of solving these that they overlook that valuable little step right there. And they do all this extra work just to find out that it really had no solution to begin with. But notice when you solve it, the solutions look fine, but it really has no solution. No value of x would make sense here because the absolute value of this expression will never equal a negative number. So make sure when you're solving these that you're paying attention early on in the problem and if your absolute value symbol is equal to a negative number, that means there's not a variable over here, it's just a negative constant, a negative number, you could stop right there and say no solution. So I really wanted to point out an example like that to show you. But let's look at two more that have a little more going on. All right, so this one, we need to get the absolute value by itself. This is definitely not that way yet. So the first step would be to add 6 to both sides. So we get negative 2, bring down the absolute value of 7 minus 3y is equal to negative 8. Let's divide by negative 2. So we get the absolute value of 7 minus 3y is equal to 4. So notice right there, when you get the absolute value symbol by itself, now it is equal to a positive number. So don't stop too early and assume it has no solution. You do want to get it by itself first, and then that needs to be just a number over there in order to say that you should keep going or it has no solution. So from here, we want to set up our two equations. So 7 minus 3y equals 4, and 7 minus 3y would equal negative 4. We could subtract 7, so negative 3y equals negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 3, and we get y equals 1. So we'll come back in just a minute and check that. Well, let's go ahead and solve this part. So subtract 7 again. Bring down negative 3y would equal negative 11. Divide both sides by negative 3. So y would equal 11 thirds. Now checking when it's a fraction is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, but it is still important. So let's check our solution. We're going to plug in y equals 1 into our original equation. So we have negative 2, the absolute value of 7 minus 3 times 1 minus 6 equals negative 14. Since they're all numbers, it doesn't take that long, even though it looks like a long problem. Just keep in mind your order of operations. So 7 minus 3 would be 4. We got negative 2 times the absolute value of 4 minus 6. We want to know is that equal to negative 14. So then we get negative 8 minus 6. 
and that does equal negative 14. So 1 checks out as part of our solution. Let's check 11 thirds. So we have negative 2, 7 minus 3 times 11 over 3. So notice keeping that as a fraction, it's going to cancel out with that 3 in front of it. And usually that can happen on these problems. So don't be too nervous about your fractions. We bring down the rest. So I have negative 2, 7 minus, see those 3's are going to cancel because one's multiplying and one's dividing. So 7 minus 11 is negative 4. Cleans up pretty quick. So negative 2 times the absolute value of negative 4, which would be positive 4. So negative 2 times 4 would be negative 8 minus 6. And again, that does make sense. It does equal negative 14. So we have two nice solutions. Y would equal 1 and 11 over 3. So let's look at our last example. What if you have one like this where you're dividing first? So again, do the opposite operation to get rid of 2. So if 2 is dividing, let's multiply by 2. So we get those 2's to go away, and the absolute value of x plus 3 would equal 12. So check right there. I have my absolute value by itself, and it's equal to a positive 12. So I can continue and set up two equations. So x plus 3 equals 12, and x plus 3 equals negative 12. I like to pick the side that has the least amount of terms to make it negative. So see how 12 is just one number? It's easy to make that side negative. But like I told you on the first slide, if you want to make the x plus 3 negative, just make sure you make it negative x minus 3. Don't just change one sign. You have to change that whole side of the equation and make it negative. So then we subtract 3. We get x equals 9. We'll check that in just a second. Subtract 3 and x equals negative 15. All right, so let's check our answer real quick. We'll plug in 9 into x in our original function. So let's see. 9 plus 3, absolute value of that, divided by 2 equals 6. So we get the absolute value of 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So that would be 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6. So 9 does check out. Let's plug in negative 15 plus 3 divided by 2 and see if that's equal to 6. So negative 15 plus 3 is negative 12. Remember you have the absolute value symbol of negative 12 equals 6. So negative 12, but the absolute value of that would be positive 12 divided by 2 does equal 